Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man that we've not seen in a couple of years, but he is fighting here come April the 13th. Bellator 197. He takes on Dominic Mazzotta. It is Josh Sampo. Josh, I appreciate time. Uh, we've not seen since 2015. Uh, I know you were, you were scheduled there for RFA 44 in, in 2016. So uh, what's been going on in, in terms of uh, you know not having any fights? Uh, well, my life's been a little tricky uh, since my last UFC fight. Um, Unfortunately, I had some uh, family issues kind of pop up. My dad passed away about four weeks before my last UFC fight, so I had to take care of that and then uh, just kind of push forward, and I still fought. Uh, things didn't go my way, but in the wake of my dad passing, still had to kind of take care of some family things and help out with my mom and make sure that she was good to go, and that took about a year um, getting everything kind of situated. And then uh, once I got that taken care of, I moved back to uh, St. Louis, got a teaching job, and just kind of moving forward that way. Uh, what, what are you teaching? I am a seventh grade science and special ed teacher in uh, St. Charles uh, County. So was that something that you went to school for? Yeah, I got my uh, my bachelor's in biology with a minor in chemistry and then went back and got my master's in teaching and uh, coaching high school wrestling kind of pushed me into the education field. And yeah, so I teach uh, middle school science right now. Do you have any students that are just completely shocked to find out that you're a professional fighter? Uh, no, I usually kind of keep that pretty quiet. Um, but I got, uh, one of, uh, the other teachers I work with was one of my former roommates and a, uh, college wrestling teammate of mine. And he tells the kids and of course, and they start Googling me and then that brings up a whole nother line of questioning. So <laughs> sometimes it, it, it leads to good conversation. Other times it leads to, uh, uh, me having to fib a little bit and tell them that that's my twin brother, which doesn't exist. So <laughs> You mentioned it's been three years. When you how, Do you look at the fight game differently now as opposed to those four fights you had in the UFC? Uh, a little bit. Um, back when I, was in the Uf, uh, when I was in the UFC, I uh, once I got signed, and then I was like, all right, I'm going to do this full time and make this my job and started working my butt off towards that. But then training and everything became a job. I had to get up every morning, you know, and I kind of I kind of lost um, a little bit of luster for it you know what i'm saying it's uh when it becomes a job becomes work you just don't have the same amount of passion but now that i have something to fall back on I, I choose to fight i don't have to fight um i've got that opportunity to uh to do it on my terms so i think i view it differently in that aspect but uh i still enjoy the competition of it but uh, i'm doing it because i want to not because i have to was there ever a moment over the last three years that you thought you would never take another professional fight uh that's crossed my mind a few times it's just uh you got to take opportunities when they arise. And after the RFA thing kind of fell through, um, I've got caught pneumonia about a week before weigh-in. So I was forced to back out, which kind of really stunk. But then we tried to get back on a couple other LFA cards and they just, they weren't having it. So it was kind of, it's a little frustrating, but um, yeah, that, that crossed my mind a few times, but I, I know that I still got a little bit more fight left in me. Uh, it's only a couple more fights. We don't know how many more, but my body will let me know when. So, but yeah, definitely want to be able to take those opportunities when they, when they do come around. That's why I hear from athletes all the time, you know, because, you know, the word of, you know, hey, at what point will your athletic career come to an end? And they all say, ultimately, it's your body that, that'll ultimately tell you. And you are at 135 here. Um, was it just simply that it was the opportunity? Or, or do you feel like, uh, you know, to finish out your run here in MMA, that it will be at 135? I just, I'm going to, like I said, it's, I'm going to take any opportunity that presents itself. Uh, the, this, this opportunity was at 135. I'm comfortable there. Um, comfortable cutting to 25 whatever whatever the case may be um but when they said hey are you cool with that and i said yeah definitely um i don't think it's going to be any different than i currently have i mean dominic's a tough fighter in all aspects of the game but i don't think he's a very big 20 or uh, 35 pounder you know he doesn't pack a lot of mass he's not a it's not like a dillashaw cutting down from like a buck 80 but i mean he's uh he's a good guy um but uh that i train with currently so it's uh yeah, it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, you mentioned about Dominic Mazzotta. He he came into Bellator oh. last year and was viewed as one of the the top prospects. Um, you know, for you as you have assessed him as an opponent, what, what sticks out to him of, of why people were so high on him? Um, I think he's just a very well rounded fighter. He's still pretty young. Well, he's got a good amount of fights underneath him too. I mean, I think he's very. Uh, He's very intelligent when he fights. He does like to come out and put on a good show, which I'm extremely excited about. I don't have to. I don't think I'm gonna have to chase him around the cage. I think he's gonna bring the fight to me, which is exactly what I'm hoping for. Um, 
I think he's exciting. I think that's kind of why he's got a lot of uh, boys behind him. He's got um, a good amount of fights with only a couple losses, but they're to tough, high-level guys. So, I mean, with that record and, and the way that he fights, I think those are the things that really kind of bring his name up. They always talk about advantages in a fight of, hey, you know, I feel like I have the advantage here, advantage there. Where, where does the fact of he hasn't seen you in three years plays into one of your advantages in this fight? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it does or it doesn't. It's just kind of, I mean, they're probably basing everything from, I watched an interview that he had not too long ago, and he said that his brother-in-law was my UFC debut. So he says he has a little bit of insight. But, I mean, it's kind of funny that he would bring that fight up. That was four years ago, five years ago. I mean, that's I'm a completely different fighter than I was then. Um, yeah, I haven't fought in three years, but that doesn't mean I've been sitting on the couch either. So I think that I've I've gained a lot of, intelligence when it comes to fighting being smarter um not just as reckless as i may have used to been you know kind of picking my shots just being smarter more intelligent when i get in the cage um using my skill set to to uh win better positions and i think that's kind of what it's about is gotta i have to win every position in order to get the win in this fight does your last fight haunt you at all Uh, of like uh, that you haven't quite gotten over it uh no not necessarily i mean it it was 15 minutes in the cage with a tough opponent. I was a little frustrated with the fact that I had to chase the guy around the cage. I mean, uh, they always tell you that we we, uh, we want to see a good performance out of you, but I kind of relate um, fighting to like bull riding. Like half of your performance comes from your opponent, and if he doesn't really want to fight, he just wants to play the punch and run game. Then you're kind of you're kind of stuck in that that uh, that environment, which really kind of sucks, especially for somebody that really wants to fight or really wants to put on a good show or whatever the case is there. Um, but I don't think that that's going to be the case with Dominic. But in my last fight, it was. It felt like it was one or two strikes, and then I felt like I was chasing him around the cage. Um, yeah, it doesn't haunt me, though. I mean, that's that's part of the past. It's part of growth, part of learning. There's some other fact on the table there, but that's it's nothing I can deal with now. So it's, it's in the past and not out of sight, out of mind. Hometown fight for you here in St. Charles. Uh, what's the biggest uh, pro of uh, having a hometown fight? Uh, getting to sleep in my own bed. I mean, I literally am like a mile away from the venue, so that's that's definitely a ben- uh, benefit. Um, just being comfortable in that aspect of things. Uh, family and friends being able to come out and watch. Uh, yeah, little things like that just kind of really make it uh, a lot more comfortable, I guess you could say. Yeah, I know you have probably visualized how this fight goes down, you know, hundreds and thousands of times. But overall, I mean, how do you see the, the victory coming? Um, I see it just being an all out, I, I see it going multiple ways. You know, I've kind of visualized every different aspect of it. I think it could be a, a three round war. I think it could be, you know, 15 minutes of nonstop action for both of us. And that's kind of what I'm hoping for. I think that that's what he brings to the table. And I'm really excited to be able to, uh, to fight in that, in that environment. Um, but it could end early in the fight. It could end late in the fight. It, you never know. You know. That's, that's why we do it. Um, that's why we actually strap the gloves on a fight. It's not a, you know, we don't just, it's not a simulation and they just see how things work out, but anything can happen in that 15 minutes. And I'm excited to see what does. Would you describe this matchup as a reintroduction of yourself to the MMA fan? I wouldn't say that. I mean, uh, reintroduction. I mean, at this point, there's so many fighters out there that it's, I, I don't, I don't fight for fame. Um, of course we, we get paid to fight, but that's not why I do it. I do it cause I enjoy the combat. I enjoy the, uh, um, the, the, challenge the uh the athleticism that all that it takes i enjoy that the, the, the competitive nature of it i don't do this just to, for for fame and riches and stuff like that like a lot of people say and like i said before i fight because i, I choose to not because i have to you know i already have a have a career and a, a good good paying job and, you know got retirement building up and stuff like that so i do this because i enjoy it and it's a passion of mine uh, but not because i need it to pay the bills uh, you know, in terms of that motivation, I mean, outside of the competitive aspect of it, is, is there anything that uh, motivates you in this matchup? Um, yeah, yeah, the guy's coming to kind of come at me and try to take my head off, so that motivates me, of course. So, uh, but yeah, uh, just I enjoy the competition, just seeing what uh, seeing what I'm capable of. I don't think that my my past few performances in the UFC really well, allowed me to showcase what I'm capable of doing. I still don't even know my full potential. So we'll we'll uh, we'll see if it uh, if it comes out on uh, the thirteenth. In, in terms of full potential and, and saying how you haven't been able to show it off, I mean, if it was a scale of one, of one to ten and ten's a full potential, where where do you think you were uh, in those fights you had in the UFC? 
Um, I think I was getting pretty close to the top, but then, like I said, like, it became a job to me, you know, it wasn't as much love and passion in there. And it's, I kind of stem back to, or look back at my, my college wrestling career and some of the best matches or um, best performances I ever had. It was just kind of um, going out there and just enjoying being in the moment. And I don't think I've, I've been there in a while. I haven't enjoyed being in the cage or enjoyed being in that moment in a while. So, um, but this whole, this whole camp just leading up to this point, leading up to the fight, it's, it's, I'm getting back to that, that point where I want to be. I'm just enjoying all of it that it, that it is, you know, there, yeah, the training and the constant running and all the, the road work and all those horrible aspects, but they're all a necessary evil to be able to perform at the highest level. So I think that that makes things a little bit different here is I'm, uh, I'm excited to see what I'm capable of doing and just going to go and uh, enjoy myself. And, of course, it all goes down on Friday night, April the 13th, live on the Paramount Network, Bellator 197. You'll be able to see Josh on the preliminary card as he takes on Dominic Mazzotta. Josh, I appreciate time, and let everybody know where they can follow you at on social media. Uh, you can follow me on uh, Facebook, uh, just Josh Sampo. Um, I've got uh, Instagram, which is uh, MMA Gremlin. Uh, you can follow me on Skype, if you like, at uh, Gremlin Time. Um, just want to thank all my family and friends and sponsors and everybody that's support me and help me back uh, get back in the cage. So it's been a <laughs> three years too long, but I'm glad that it's finally happening.